an interesting time to join us on the program Law on You, where we've been taking our time to treat legal topics in order to elucidate concepts. We've been having you know, topics that we should really look at with the legal practitioner who is an expert in that uh, field and, and other areas. Now, looking at what we've been treating, which has to do with uh, succession in estate planning with a close look at trust. Uh, it will blow your mind that today we're going to be bringing you living examples. You know, it's another interesting time for you to uh, look at what it is all about with living examples to elucidate the concept. My name is Philip Omo Gupo, and I have the barrister with me that I've been on this series, and he's Ahigbe Oseogo. Thanks for joining me, Ahigbe. Thank you, Mr. Philip. Thanks for having me. All right, before we uh, go to the brass tacks of the uh, topic for today, uh, uh, let's look at the parties that are involved in trust. Okay. Um, so, a trust, um, there are three parties involved. Okay. That is the person you call the settlor. He's the owner of the property. And then he appoints somebody else called the trustee to manage those assets for the, benef for the benefit of a third class of persons uh, referred to as beneficiaries. Okay. So um, why is he setting up a trust? He's setting up a trust to achieve a certain object. So there must be an object for setting up the trust. So um, it could be an educational fund, for example. So the idea is that um, um, for maybe his children to have access to funds to foster their educational uh, pursuits. It could be uh, for charity to say that, okay, maybe I'm a member of a church I want money to be designated, uh, to be set aside for maybe the aged or for those who have special needs. You know, so there must be the owner of the property okay. who effectively transfers it to a trustee for the benefit of the third party. When you have these three um, um, components, then we say a trust has been created. Okay. Um, but taking it a step further, um, trusts are created by a group of persons we call high net worth individuals. So uh, a man works very hard, um, um, gets a lot of assets, assets in money, properties, and whatever. You see, at such times, what is important to him is how to protect those assets, how to ring fence those assets such that third parties are, he is not exposed to third parties in terms of um, um, coming after those assets. Yeah. So I'll give you two examples. <laughs> and both of them are sportsmen. Um, one a footballer, the other a golfer. Um, the footballer, um, Akraf Hakimi, PSG, uh, we the internet was agog with his uh, divorce um, issue where his wife filed for divorce and um, um, the, the part of the divorce settlement, um, she got next to nothing or nothing substantial because he had informally created a trust. What did he do? He transferred his assets from his estate to his mother, right? So when um, the issue of settlement arose, there was nothing substantial in his estate for the wife to go after. Okay, so let's look at the flip side of the coin. The person who um, took steps to protect or ring fence his estate. Yeah. That is um, um, Tiger Woods, or rather the person who did not take steps. Tiger Woods also had a dispute with his wife that resulted in a divorce. And since there was no plan, no, um, 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 no plan, yeah. as it were, no trust, he was exposed. Just reading through the internet, I could see that the wife got as much as $100 million. Wow. Because no steps were taken 
to ring fence his estate from third parties. One thing a trust does is to protect those properties. Remember I said you have the set law, you have the trustee, and you have the beneficiary. The assets revolve around these three persons. So once the said law transfers, it goes to the trustee, and then the trustee must of necessity um, utilize those assets for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Now, when those assets constitute part of the estate of the you know, owner, yeah. he's exposed to all sorts of issues, okay. especially the high and net worth individuals. Okay. So what do we advise? We came up with a philosophy, a principle in succession that says always ensure, especially for the high net worth individuals, always ensure that you impoverish your estate such that where there are issues, there will be nothing to go after. And one of the ways to impoverish your estate is by creating a trust. A trust. By moving those assets away from the person's estate. Okay to the trustee, and in the eyes of the law, once those properties are effectively transferred to the trustee, they cease to become that of the uh, set law. Okay, okay, okay. Before we go on, you made a good example with uh, the golfer, Tiger Woods, uh, and of course the counterpart in yeah. sports also. Yeah. Now, are you saying that there should be a prototype, you know, that we should look at in succession in estate planning as regards what it did? Because uh, uh, if you look at the spouses involved, you know, uh, would you say uh, legally that they are not supposed to also have a part or share? Well, I, 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 I will refrain from commenting on the issues relating to their marriage. <laughs> uh, I will only limit myself. I, I use them as, as, as an example to show that, see, one, of course, was carried away by love. Oh. And the other was carried, well, the other was, you know, took, took very serious steps. One was carried away by love. Yes. Sorry to cut in. You mean uh, love could have a bad side? Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being careful <laughs> not to go uh, that route. Okay. But the point I'm making is this. Once you become a person of means, the issues plaguing the mind at that time, at that point, is no longer how to acquire assets. It's now how to protect those assets. Very now, beyond creating a trust, another thing that can be done is to ensure that those assets are held in corporate structures. Uh, in company law, one of the cases they taught us, uh, even in the university, Force and Harbour okay. the company is different and distinct from its owners. So if I purchase property in the name of a company, if my company purchases property, that property doesn't belong to me as an individual. Yeah. It belongs to the company. So when the inevitable happens, you cannot go after that property as belonging to the individual. You go, if you attempt to do that, the company will block it and say, no, the property does not belong to him. The property belongs to the company. Okay. And it is only the company that can give it to you. So for high net worth individuals, it's now a cake. It, it is uh, quite unwise, for want of a better word, to acquire properties in your name. Oh. Because, of course, creditors are there, people will come after you, and people are just waiting for the individual to pass on, and then you start hearing all sorts of things. There has to be an estate plan. Okay. And, and one, of, one of sorts for those kind of persons is the creation of a trust. Okay, let's look at the because you just uh, by this uh, you've been able to establish a very good example with very good examples. Mm. You know the advantage that a trust has over a will. Yes. So uh, can we also uh, uh, spotlight other advantages? Uh, and and again, um, you spoke about high uh, net worth individuals. Mm. Now, are you advising that rather than go for the will, mm. they should go for the trust? Of course. Go for the trust. Okay. So but, look at other sp spotlight, other examples. Okay. Uh, 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 as against advantages, uh, advantages over uh, the wheel. wheel. Uh, trust okay. has over the so wheel. let me tell you one interesting thing about wheels. You know, in our previous episodes, we talked about the fact that 
um, a will must have two executors, or oh, at yes. least two executors. Now, upon the demise of the uh, testator, as the person who writes the will, the assets in the eyes of the law belong to the executors. So the flip side is the assets belong to the trustee, trustee. As, it, as it relates to a trust. But for the will, um, the assets belong to the testator. testators. Uh, sorry, the sorry. executors. Okay, okay. Until the executors transfer those assets to the beneficiaries, the beneficiary cannot do anything. Now, the process of transferring those assets to the beneficiaries is through a document called, you know, uh, uh, um, um, is a, a deed. It will come back okay. shortly. Now, in the process of perfecting that process of transfer, if it's land especially, is costly. You will pay 10% of the value of that land to government. So imagine the man has a house in the GRA worth <laughs> 100 million. The, and then the inevitable happens, right? The uh, executors will first apply for letters of administration. Okay. They will pay 10% of the value of that property to government and other uh, sundry charges. And then when the transfer has been done, for the beneficiaries to perfect that process, if that title is registered, maybe it is covered by a certificate of occupancy, they will have to go and apply to still perfect the title. So you see the process. Yeah, yeah, rigorous. Rigorous. And you are going to be paying a lot. Now, a man whose father just died, and then you're asking him to pay 10% of all that, and, you know... Are you saying that uh, having a will is more uh, prone to probate issues probate as issues. compared to the trust? Of course. Okay. You are going to pay uh, 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 all those um, charges, all those fees, mm. before the property is effectively perfected and transferred to the beneficiary. But for a trust... All the benefit, all the um, set law has to do is to transfer to the uh, trustee. trustee. And then the trustee begins to carry out his obligations to the beneficiary as defined in the trust deed. Okay. And that can happen in the lifetime of the, of the set law. So he doesn't have to wait till the inevitable occurs as it relates to a will. You know, a will starts to speak from death. All right. You know, so... Just to emphasize the point, a right. trust has a lot of advantages over a will. And then, um, um, like, I, like I also said, create corporate structures such that you pauperize your estate. When the inevitable occurs, people will no longer be able to pinpoint any asset in that estate because there will yeah. be nothing there, just There'll like the footballer. There. Yeah. <laughs> there will be nothing there. So she could cry to high heavens. There'll be nothing there, but I must say, like you tried to drag me into, I'm, <laughs> I'm using their, their examples to emphasize the principles of trust. But um, the flip side to it is whether I agree with the step he took, that is the footballer, well, okay. I may not say, say so entirely. But. Well, but, 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 but if you look at the way the story went, mm. you know, uh, it, it, it would be somehow if if it had ended in a point where, you know, the woman wasn't seen as a suspect, you know, mm. after the property of the footballer, mm. then that would have been excusable. But a situation where uh, these days uh, you find people contracting marriages, you know, just for the purpose of having such benefit mm. at mm. the end of the mm. uh, marriage, you mm. know, in order to get a huge, you know, uh, benefit from the matrimony, you know, that brings a whole lot of suspicion. Yeah. Yeah. into anyone going into such contract as marriage. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes imperative that such, you know, tactics or uh, uh, of course. Uh, deployments are necessary, you know, of in course. terms of guiding and protecting your assets. Of course. Okay, but let's look at the other side because in the previous edition you were talking about uh, another advantage that a trust has and how one can operate it even from outside the of origin, course. you know, yeah. from another country, yeah. you know, in order to avoid... Uh, taxation or over taxation can yes. you go through it again okay that, 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 that basically we have four broad categories of trusts we have a living trust the man is alive oh yeah you have a testamentary trust he creates the trust in his will you have a revocable trust 
and then you have an irrevocable trust. Four. Now, all other sub um, um, types fall under these it's four cool. categories. But specifically, like you asked, um, we have what is called offshore trusts. So I have, this is how it works, especially for the high net worth individuals. Oh. I have assets in Nigeria, um, houses and scattered everywhere. I have thought about it that the taxes I would pay in Nigeria are on the high side. So what I decided to do, I appointed a trustee who is domiciled outside Nigeria in a tax haven. That is, in a country where their tax laws are favorable. Um, and then he manages the assets from there. Mm. He is not subject to the taxation here, but subject to the tax laws over there. Over there. And it, it's an arrangement whereby I'm able to repatriate the funds from that country without any headache. Without any headache? Yes. From the government yes. of that country? Yes. So if I have that kind of structure, nothing illegal, it's all in the books. If I have that kind of structure... Backed by law? Yes. I would rather appoint a trustee offshore to manage my assets in Nigeria and allow me to repatriate the funds. Okay, but, look at, but looking at the expenses again, <laughs> one may uh, see it as well, another way of uh, spending the money that you would, uh, you would have spent or that you think uh, you are avoiding you know, uh, by getting a foreign trustee. Expenses? Yes. I am sure, 100%, that I will get better services. Okay. Considering the complexities of my assets. Okay. And if I'm... Because, like you said, for high... Uh, net worth net individuals. individuals. So if I, if I, if I um, am able to um, come to the conclusion that these guys will provide me with um, better services, services, first class services... Um, which is um, paramount. Which is the important thing. Mm. Then what stops me? So why should I give, why should I give that kind of assignment to uh, someone who doesn't have the expertise? Okay. If I can source for the expertise outside of the country, and they are able to meet my demands, then all well and good. Okay. The, the point is I'm able to repatriate the funds all right. uh, back to Nigeria. All right. We will we'll try to uh, put an end to the aspect of trust uh, in today's uh, episode. And, but just in case you're just joining, it's Law and You, and we expect that you also pouch uh, your responses to us via the number on the screen uh, so that we can treat these issues uh, that may be bothering or boggling your mind you know, as the show progresses. And uh, if we can do that immediately, of, of course we can't, uh, but we, we ensure that we pan it out in the next edition uh, to see how we can attend to the issues uh, troubling you. Well, I've been speaking with a seasoned legal practitioner in the person of Akigbe Oseo, and uh, the program is Law and You, as you know. But let's fortify this episode by mm. having other uh, ideas uh, concerning how to get a trustee, because you've been talking about trustee, trustee, trustee. Now, for someone who may have that, uh, who may not have the uh, wherewithal, you know, in, in terms of knowledge-based, you know, information, you know, in terms of knowledge, you know, to get an expert that can manage uh, the business, mm. uh, how can one go around it? Yeah, okay, so let me put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's use... Uh... Uh, what's his name now? The footballer, the PhD footballer. Yeah. You see, what he did, he already knew that such a day like that would, would, come. would come. He already knew. And because he knew, he planned ahead. He was able to identify someone he trusts. You know, okay, as the name implies. That, from the literary He, he, he identified the person he trusts. That is the trustee, his mm -hmm. mother. So the trustee can be anyone. Well, it can also be a firm. It, it could be, be a firm. Now, now let, me even, <laughs> let me even tell you something else. You see, it, it could even be what is now called a family office. Okay. So abroad, you have um, high net worth individuals. They establish what is called a family office. That family office um, has maybe a legal practitioner at the middle. 
And that legal practitioner um, has um, people that take di directives from him, like tax um, experts, like accountants, like uh, estate um, managers, and all of that. So they are in that family office to manage the assets. Right? So they must... And see, you can't do it on your own. No, you can't. There comes that time where Mr. Philip Omoro Gugman will have so much money that he may even forget that there is this child abroad mm. whose school fees have to be paid. That family office, regulated by a lawyer, an accountant, uh, a tax practitioner, and all of that, they help him manage his affairs. You are trying to see into the future for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's bright. Thank you. So, now, they help him manage his affairs. That's the kind of thing that um, high net worth individuals do abroad. Yeah, yeah. They appoint trustees and say, manage this thing for me. Um, so, but in coming to Nigeria, we have corporate trustees. Um, the banks, they have corporate trustees. Okay. They have their trustee arms. Um, so, and then, but informal, informally, you can find someone with integrity. Mm. Someone you trust to manage your assets, uh, to meet the demands or the, the, the objects you want um, those assets to be uh, used for, okay. for the benefit of main beneficiaries. So there is no hard and fast rule about it. Um, it's just to identify the experts who would be of assistance to carry out the wishes of the, uh, of the set law. Okay. Uh, in your closing remarks on this episode, uh, what's your advice for uh, the uh, February... For the, for the public, you know, in terms of what to do uh, uh, as part choosing a plan in uh, succession. Choosing a plan uh, for wills, remember I told you anybody can write a will. <laughs> anybody can write a will. Um, creating a trust, I, I don't think anybody can just write a trust. No. Prepare a trust deed, rather. Um, but, you see, the, the bottom line is seek the services of an expert. Okay. Um, seek the services of an expert. And then finally, if you fail to plan... You, plan you inevitably plan to fail, mm. especially for those who have assets scattered all around. There is a need to create an estate plan, okay. no matter how um, um, simple, but at least create one because the inevitable can happen at any time. Thank you so much for taking our time to be part of, part of this. Uh, and I'm sure we've been able to enlighten you in this regard. Well, we do this same time next week, but I assure you we're going to be having a new topic on board. Goodbye.